Everyone needs to find his or her spiritual path in life. I found mine after receiving an OBE. Oh, that's an out-of-body experience, which led me to becoming a dowser of ley lines. Now, lays are invisible straight lines that stretch across the landscape, connecting ancient sacred sites, which radiate spiritual hives of energy. Two years ago, these newfound interests led me to travel the globe in search of the world's paranormal activities, its ley lines, and the ultimate UFO conspiracy. I've always thought that UFOs and ley lines are the twin pillars of what is known as Earth Mysteries. So, I arm myself with a cheap video camera, strong walking boots, and prepare to embark on this journey of discovery. My name is Dominic Clay, and this is my video diary. My first point of contact was paranormal investigator Dan Rokery. He'd hosted a cable TV show called True Stories, a series that researched the world's most famous conspiracy theories. Unfortunately, on the day we met, he was suffering from a hangover the size of Calcutta, so only managed to give me little tidbits of information of where to go and what to find, and who to meet. Before arriving at the Euro Tunnel, I stopped off in Ramsgate to meet up with spiritual researchers Damien Griffith and Richard Avis. They were investigating an old house which was being haunted by its former owner. Oliver Raymond died about 1888 and is buried in the back garden. When Oliver passed on, he vowed that no building work should ever be undertaken on the property. Somewhere in the mists of time, there's um, some really strange um, thing that we can't do in the house. It's actually written in the deeds. No, it's not written in the deeds. But it's recorded elsewhere. But it's recorded elsewhere, but we don't know where. That you're not allowed, there are certain restrictions of use of this property. After a nice meal cooked for us by Damien, I booked myself onto a coach and headed off into Europe. I passed through some glorious countryside in France and Belgium before arriving at the historic town of Bremen in Germany. Keen to indulge myself in the history of the town, I joined a tour guide party to further enlighten my educational juices. And, and the middle part is early Gothic and has the wide windows and here the high gothic style is shown by these small and high windows. I discovered a small lay here which was only about two miles long but incorporated many of the local landmarks. Moving on to the town of Minden and its historic Kaiser Monument, I managed to catch up with some old friends, Jolga and Jan. They had abandoned their conventional lifestyles to live in a tent on top of a mountain. But unfortunately, when I arrived, they were being told to pack up and move on by the local authority. You never thought it would be like this, but it did. <laughs> well, I've been dowsing quite a lot here in Germany. Um, I've traced some interesting ley lines uh, around Bremen, uh, Minden, Frankfurt probably about four significant ley lines. And what's interesting, every time I, I've been doing the research, I've been meeting people who think that uh, ley lines are also focus points for UFO sightings. Now I'm getting very interested in UFOs. Um, I think it's a fascinating phenomena. I've actually been in contact with a gentleman called uh, Mr. Moffitt, who apparently is a ufologist, which is a, a UFO researcher. Now I'm going to go and meet him soon. Um, and he's actually going to give me some information about the notorious Area 51 in the Nevada Desert, which is actually on the next leg of my tour. Um, I'll be heading over there in about two weeks' time. So I'm going to go and meet Mr. Moffitt, see what he's got to say for himself. I don't know what he looks like. We've only actually communicated through email. Um, so yeah, it should, that, uh, should be prove quite interesting. So uh, rather exciting as well. I met some very colourful characters in Europe, including a British art critic who actually thought she knew about art. There's a great Chinese philosopher once said, art has no meaning, it's the interpretation that has meaning. I visited a rather interesting beer museum, which was ironic since I'd given up drinking four years previously. Das war für Kronkorkenverschlüsse, 
Right, I'm on my way to meet Mr. Moffat. From what I gather from his emails, he's actually from Manchester, so uh, that's good. I don't speak much German. I must have met him in this. We're actually in a forest uh, just outside Hanover. Um, he said he wanted to meet us here. It was quiet, secluded, so uh, a bit mysterious. A little bit nervous actually, but um, I really want to see this guy. I think it's going to be very interesting. So uh, here we go. Here he is, mysterious Mr. Moffat. Um, hi. Hi, I'm, I'm, I'm Dominic Clay. Nice to meet you. So, uh, you have information um, on how I can meet this guy. Um, what, what's his name? He has no name. Right. So, so how do I contact him then? Ah, and what's, what's in the book? Everything. Everything you need to know is in that book. And how to contact him, how to speak to him, how to arrange to meet him? Everything is in that book. That's great. Shh. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. It was a very strange encounter meeting the mysterious Mr. Moffat. But the notebook he gave me at least pointed me in the right direction. Okay, I've uh, I've finished my tour of Europe. I'm now taking the car back to the compound and heading towards the airport. Um, a brief stop over at Heathrow, then on my way to the United States. Uh, I'm passing down in Los Angeles uh, in search of this mysterious chap. Europe's been really nice actually, it's got some glorious countryside if you can see that. As I said, I picked up some interesting ley lines. But well, now I want to develop more of this fascination with UFOs. Uh, so it should prove interesting. So hopefully next time we meet, um, I shall be in LA. And from there, hopefully, notorious Area 51. So, this is where the real adventure was about to begin, as I headed onwards to the United States. After a brief stopover in New York, I arrived in Los Angeles, tired but optimistic. The long flight had worn down my spiritual karma, and I needed some serious regenerating before continuing. I'd heard about fieldwork into a major ley line on the west coast, and was eager to douse this myself. Okay, uh, this is day 67 of my world dowsing tour. Uh, I've been tracing a ley line that I picked up in San Diego and it's passed up through into Los Angeles. Uh, what's very interesting is the ley line passes through the Hollywood sign. And what's also of note, the ley line goes through the two L's of that sign. Two L's as in ley line. That's very interesting. This had filled me with excitement and I decided to douse and explore more of LA County. It was during this time that I met a travelling partner called Monica Jameson, a waitress from New York, who seemed to cling to me like car bumpers on the LA freeway. Dom! How you doing, all right? <laughs> but like me, she was interested in the UFO phenomena, so I let her tag along. Though I must admit, I think she was more interested in enjoying herself than doing any serious field study. Monica and I drove to meet the mysterious man with no name. He said we should meet him at a secluded and pre-arranged location of his choice. We both found this a little odd, because when we finally met him, this secluded location was in the middle of Santa Monica Beach. Before he would talk to me though, we had to go through what he called initiation. This involved a chess game with no chess pieces, pushing him on a swing, and a 25 yard piggyback ride. Run, piggy! Run! With that over, Run. he finally sat down to talk to me. Uh, what, what, what do I call him? Just call me. Um, what information can you tell me? What information can you tell me about Area 51? I can tell you. I can tell you. Okay. Um, I wasn't quite sure where this conversation was going, but I carried on listening regardless. Oh, yes. Monica? Oh. <laughs> 
thank you very much um, for seeing us. Thank you. Uh, I think we've probably got all the information we need. Um, do you think we need any more, Monica? No. Um, thanks. With this total fruitcake being absolutely no help whatsoever, Monica and I headed into the Nevada desert and the infamous Area 51. The first port of call on the journey was Las Vegas. As we had arrived late in the day, Monica and I decided to explore the strip before the early start in the morning. We are walking down the strip and it is all absolutely tacked. Unfortunately for me, the place resonated about as much spiritual power as a bad Elvis impersonator. The next day I met Jerry a helicopter pilot who was willing to take Monica and I near to the no-fly zone of Area 51. As we left Las Vegas airport, I was immediately blown away by the scale and magnificence of the Nevada desert. It was interesting to see the rugged and otherworldly landscape looking a lot like an alien planet. I thought this was very significant. During the flight, Jerry told me about some of the strange objects he had seen in the sky around this area. Yeah, if you, uh, if you look over there, I, I see a lot of uh, uh, red lights uh, hanging around uh, just the other side of that bridge there. Uh, you know, it, it sort of followed me around for about, uh, oh, I don't know, about 10 minutes, okay? Uh, then it must have got bored because it fucked up. But there was more to come. He was taking us to meet a local cowboy who would tell us more about Area 51 and the surrounding spiritual landscape. As we touched down, Jerry said he would come back and pick us up in an hour and three quarters, no later. Apparently this hour and three quarters is when the facility is at its most vulnerable, as staff are having their lunch breaks. We met our guide who was taking us by horse and cart to the edge of Area 51. My name's Billy, I'm going to be with you for the short period of time you're all going to be here, about an hour and 45 minutes. As everybody noticed, the helicopters do not shut down. Yeah. It shows everybody we are on a time schedule. We've got an hour and 45 minutes to do what we're going to do, okay? Right over here, you see the big mountain over here, it's called Spirit Mountain. Look at the main base and bottom, and then look at the next layer of stone. As you look across there, you'll start to see faces in the stone. That's what the Indians saw hundreds of years ago, when they were watering their horses. Billy was an interesting guy, but he couldn't get a word in edgeways. As the sun moves, the faces change. It's because of the way the shadows go on the stone, that's what makes them change. This mountain is very well known in Nevada. They got a casino over there called Spirit Mountain Casino. Eventually, he took us back to his ranch whilst we waited for our helicopter ride back. And Billy, he just kept on talking. On the other side of the mountain, he was working over here. Cattle ranches here have gone broke, so everybody's kind of... He did sing us a nice song, though. Yeah, the Lord, give me the sunshine. Sing a little sunshine song. Monica and I travelled back to Vegas to pick up the car. This was the final leg of my journey. With nerves running high, we headed up what is known as Extraterrestrial Highway towards the outskirts of Area 51. I personally do believe in the rights of aliens, you know? It, it's not fair. They should be left to fly in the sky or something. Do you want to bring the, to bring the camera this way? Now I've got with very good authority that in this area of Nevada, there's been no water for at least 30 years. So come here. No water has gone through here for 30 years. So what's going on? What's this? What's this? Where did lake come from? Where did river come from? And this is actually flowing out from Area 51. Okay, is this excess alien craft fuel? I don't know. Uh, it's very interesting. Very interesting. Park in the car. We approach the perimeter cautiously. Okay. Monica and I are about to move into the outskirts of Area 51. Um, this is highly dangerous. Um, but we feel we've got no other choice, so uh, he goes. I think we better turn the camera off now, actually. Oh, shit! We were shot at and I broke a nail! It's quite frightening, actually. We have been shot at uh, by a security firm around Area 51. We've managed to evade them, which is good. Um, this whole part's got a bit tense at the dozen at the moment. There is something going on there. Um, and I think they are trying to cover up anybody's um, trying to get in there and seeing what's going on. Um, it does bear closer inspection, but I don't think we're going to be able to do that anymore. I, I, I value our lives too much, but uh, 
we have been shot at. Not, luckily, we're both, me and Monica, are fine. Uh, she broke a nail, unfortunately. Uh, I'm gonna try and go and find a coffee somewhere because I'm quite frightened at the moment. Okay, we've just uh, escaped from Area 51, Monica and I. We're now making our way back onto extra extraterrestrial highway. There's some interesting stuff happened today. Um, unfortunately, we haven't really got that much evidence. So, that'll be for the experts to decipher. We're gonna head back to the hotel now and uh, panic. The experience of Area 51 left me shaken and stirred. I eventually travelled back to England and settled in the village of Ravenswood. Ravenswood, with its very own UFO incident. Oh, this is it. The field where the UFO landed. As you can see, there's no evidence. But of course, that's another story. Okay, thank you. Sunshine, sing a little sunshine song.